Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today we are on day two of Hunter's Challenge. I'm just gonna select the workout, get it up. Ooh. Okay, today micro bursts. Basically what micro bursts are, are you go high for 50 sec 15 seconds, you relax for 15 seconds, you go hard again for 15 seconds. You can you do that in, in 10 times I think and then you recover from that and do it again, recover, do it again. So not an enjoyable day. Got my sock gains on because every little is needed. So stress points today 78. So quite nice. Um just to endure the the hurt really through this one. Hopefully it's gonna be easier than I think it's gonna be. But I don't know. PR four. I did seventy two kilometers. Oh okay, we're just doing that. So lap eight, twenty kilometers. This this yeah, this workout is only an hour long. A bit better than yesterday. Only 40 minutes yesterday. 40 minutes. But this one's better. I don't want to do box hill actually. I need some new black maps, I think. I know it's quite hard that to develop a map and they are quite a new company but they definitely need to look into getting another map I think a couple of these maps haven't been out that long either so okay well, we'll just do laps of Greater London Flat I guess yeah let's do that so done that done that hot rates on control A just to make sure everything's good. Running, yep. Okay, well I've got two marker bursts. Add on. So, as I see there, yeah. So, finish in 60 minutes. Oh. Finish in 60 minutes, 10 minute workout. Then 15 seconds of 430 watts. You do that 20 times and then a five minute rest. Then you do it again, 15 seconds for 20 minutes, uh, 15 seconds at 430 watts. And then do that again 20 times and then five minutes rest. And then another third time. So this, just in my shoes. Ten minutes more is quite nice actually. Get the legs going, get the heart going. Bit of cold one today. Snow and ice outside. Okay. Turn a bit faster too. Really? How does the warm up work? What do you mean, how does it work? Some people just warm up. How does it work? You just do what it tells you to do stay within the boundaries. Although the boundaries aren't highlighted, like on the actual intervals, it's just a rough guideline. Just trying to get myself comfortable and in the in the right position. I think soon it's going to be time to change my kit. Although I'm quite, a, I do like the fact that it's a stages like stages fan. I do like the fact that it says stages on him. 
I do have a status power meter, that's what I use for Zwift. So, works quite nicely. I am very close to getting a present, I don't know what the present is. Or uh, achievement reward. The box is a present, so it's a present. There we go, it doesn't really matter what you call it. So the other day I was watching Cycling Weekly at the YouTube channel and I found a basically a test that pros do to see how like their initiation test I guess. Well that's what they classed it as anyway. So basically I think it's run by the guys from Supperfest because the guy on the video had a Supperfest t-shirt on explaining it all. And basically they do a couple of other sprints and then they do a four minute all out effort. Uh, but this is after like a 17 minute warm up or so. So, and then all, from the results, I guess they can see um, how good they are and whether they're worthy of being a pro. To be completely honest, the wattage output wasn't that great on their um, the expectations. But again, that's completely irrelevant when it comes to what's per kilo. So in terms of a heavy thigh, they were putting out 320 watts on a all out full um, four minute effort. But because pretty much the average weight of a pro is about 65 to 75 kilograms, that power is quite good. Definitely, that's pretty much five five watts per kilo, six watts per kilo. Pretty close to that. So I do want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that um, workout. I'm going to turn it into a uh, a Zwift. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that workout, put it into a Zwift planned workout. I'm going to give it a go. Um, in terms of the four minute power. I know for a fact that I can hit 320 minutes, 20 watts per four minutes, but because of the watts per kilo, I'm going to be having to hit maybe 450 to get the same kind of watts per kilo as on the chart they were showing. Anyway, I'll link the video into this just so you can have a look at it if you want to. It's quite entertaining to watch. I guess, I don't know whether, I'm not sure whether it's an actual pro initiation test to be fair, because a lot of people that were doing it, I know obviously they might be doing it for fun, but a lot of the people in the video, they weren't very, I don't know, they didn't look very aesthetically like pro cyclists kind, kind of thing or even Cat 1, Cat 2s that were trying to get into pro cycling. So, I don't know, maybe Supperfest decided to do that, like, basically a training camp, so they could work, like, sort it out. But yeah. So, three minutes left of the warm up, opening the legs. Heart rate is quite nice. So 430 watts. So the cadence workout that I done yesterday, I can already feel. I was, I was cycling to work, cycling back. I can already feel that that's slightly. I was slightly adapted to that kind of that workout. So I'm trying to. I think I'm, it's more that I'm aware of my cadence a bit more. So where I was looking at power, knowing that I was about 90, 90 RPM, 
Now I'm looking down, looking at my power, I'm going, okay, I'm at 92, let's try and get the same power at 100. And it seems to be okay. So, although it's not obviously not gonna be set in yet properly, the fact that it's made me aware obviously means that it's a already beneficial workout. I definitely need a fan, man, because I don't really want to keep my windows open at the moment. It's pretty cold. It's like minus two at the moment outside. And when you've got minus two and you're dressed like this, then opening the window, getting that cold breeze, that's not good for you. I just had to quickly stop and get my water bottle. I don't want to be left without that. So what I'm doing here is I'm going from a small cog to the big cog and not touching my cassette. This is going to be nasty, man. I can already feel it. Sweating already, only five in. Holding that kind of wattage, adjusting that quickly. That's quite a hard thing to do. It's only 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off. There we go. Let's increase the resistance by one on my turbo trainer <sighs> 
Uh, I think the key here, or the aim here, is to keep your heart rate high, but not too high that you push over. So it keeps it at a quite a high rate. So if you look, 63, 66, 67, 170, back down. feeling because you can't get into a certain pace a certain frame of mind you can't adapt your mind properly because you're always uh, 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 uh. in and about 50 to go. This is disgusting. See how much I'm sweating from this? It's good training though, really good training. Just keep my heart rate up to the 170s. Shoes a bit loose. A bit tight now. Oh no, oh no. Come on. Okay, 
feels about right. The reason that happens is a bit psychological, but also your feet expand with the blood. I don't think I'm going to get, I might get okay on this, but not definitely not worth it. Hey! New kit, new socks. Sock gains, baby. Sock gains. The gains of the sock. I've got more percentage points than an aero helmet. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. But to be fair, in this kind of position, it might be true. He's not tucked in like this, but that kind of drag point in there, it still it's come, becomes irrelevant to be fair. If you're in a position like this. I just really increase my cadence. Get spinning. That little four pattern was courtesy of day one, Hunter's Challenge. Sorry, you might see uh, pretty much every ride, every video I do, I'm adjusting something. <laughs> Sometimes it just can't be helped. It just gets in the way, you know. Or you don't know, depending. Towards the end, that wasn't too bad, but it's just so confusing on your on your body and your mind. To be fair, it feels like if you watch Daredevil, where he's in the capsule and they're like, "We're going to give you enough oxygen to breathe, and then we're going to take it away, and then we're going to give it to you back again, just so you can stay alive and not die." I know that's a bit dramatic, but this is kind of what that is. But with your heart rate, I'm gonna push it up there. And then when it starts hurting, I'm gonna drop it back down. But not too much, only about five beats per minute. And I'm gonna smash it back up again then. Basically what that does is pretty much keeps you in a specific heart rate zone. But allows you to stay in it for a bit longer simply because you're not constantly say for example zone four if i'm always in zone four i'm going to get tired quite quickly whereas if i'm in zone four for 15 seconds and then back down and then zone back zone four again theoretically my heart rate should still be in zone four even though i'm not pushing on the, in that kind of voyage simply because it takes time to come down so what that does is just allows me to adapt to that kind of pressure in zone four a little bit more so I can hold it for a little bit longer. Microbursts are basically trying to represent little catch, catch ups and races and things like that. That's what it does help, or well, I say it does help, but
as long as you're training, to be fair. I know does, what kind of training does help, what kind of training when all helps. But this kind of training from basically a professional coach that's trained well over 200 professional athletes within very close recent past. Because obviously you get coaches that trained Eddie Merckx and stuff, and oh yeah, he trained Eddie Merckx. But the problem with that is the kind of techniques that they're off doing back then aren't really relevant today because they're just outdated. So your coach or the plan you're working out on has to be quite relevant. See a lot of, uh, I don't say, I don't mean a lot, but I've been reading that, oh, I'll tell you next time. <laughs> We're just yeah, about to hit the pain cave. Pain Going on there. I forgot to. I forgot that. I changed upper gear in my cassette to spin a bit more. It's to the point that you just gradually feel the lactic acid going to your legs and it comes back in. Yeah, so what I was talking about is something called the reverse pyramid. So a lot of training plans say it's winter, time for a lot of endurance. Whereas a lot of recent plans, or it's been highly, been used much more, anyway, is the other way around. So you base yourself on endurance in the summer when it's nice and warm. Uh, but obviously not fully and then do more sprint intervals in the winter times simply so if you don't have an indoor trainer or you want to get out on on the road more then you don't have to stay out too long because in the summer if you don't mind staying out it's nice and warm it's sunny Good weather. <laughs> Sometimes you're so immersed into the game, you think, oh God, I'm gonna hit that person. Stand up, change the muscles, 
Sit back down, get some blood in there. It's always good to have fine-tuned gears when you're doing something like this because you're always going from small to big ring. Oh, that was a bad one. Sometimes you have to stop yourself pushing it a bit more because you'll regret it because it won't give you time for your heart rate to drop down. Be right in the moment. Uh, reps. And then it'll gradually creep up to the point where you can't do it anymore. So always keep it within the power that it specifies. He says that and then goes a bit lower and then a bit too high. Okay, 12. Okay, you do get kind of used to this. It never feels good, but you do get better at it, and you don't feel as bad. Depending on, depending on how much you talk through it. <laughs> I just skipped on because my camera ran out of SD space. I forgot to delete my last couple of files from the last video. Which is not good. You can see the little drop in my heart right and my power there. It doesn't screw everything up. But as you do with training days, if you screw up a little bit, just ignore it and carry on. Because you might end up overtraining a little bit to compensate. It's not a good idea either. It means that these last two are going to hurt more, simply because my heart rate's gone down a little bit too much. So getting back up there. Or maybe the other way around. Depends really. Uh, yeah, 
Because my legs hurt now. One more set of that. I don't think I've got perfect on that one, definitely not. Oh nice, it's got quite a big lenience. Now's the best time to drink some water. Five minutes rest. Let the heart rate drop a little. As I said before, uh, it's better to keep the cadence high because it allows all the lactic acid in your legs to come out of there quicker. Oh. towel, see at the bottom drenched, where my hands are drenched, it's not a very thick, well, I can't say a towel, it's a t-shirt but it's not very thick so obviously that does matter but uh, saves the bike a little bit. I remember where I used to work, obviously they've been doing a lot of indoor training because one of my colleagues took the bar tape off and the bars were actually rusty because of the sweat that had got to them or because the bike had been left outside but if the bike was left outside there'd be much more signs of rust than just underneath the bar tape so I'm pretty sure it was because of the indoor trainer the smell and the rust it's not good I mean, holes in the bars because of the rust have gone so far deep down. Okay. So legs are feeling it now. I'm finding it hard to stay at this specific wattage with this specific cadence. I want to put it up a little bit. But then I go too high. So just try and keep it at that. After a while, after when you get used to it, it obviously your legs will not as hurt because your body, your muscles will have adapted. <clears throat> okay, one more set of these bad boys. And I've got perfect so far, which is quite a rare occasion for me. One minutes left. <clears throat> as soon as you start trying to get perfect, I guarantee you you're not going to be able to get it. So I'm just trying not to think about it. <clears throat> but when you're doing this kind of Plan training. I've done 23 kilometers already. I mean, yeah, that's not much. It's only like six, seven miles, six, twelve, twelve, thirteen, about fourteen miles. But it does go quite quickly. Much better than if you were just riding around on the indoor trainer. Okay, 20 seconds and then the last interval set. 
and nice 10 minute cool down, which I actually find quite hard to do because again, specific cadence, specific voltage, gradually decreasing. That little tick up on my cassette as well. <laughs> I got that last time. Hey, that one hurt. Okay, up to one hundred and seventy two, seventy one. Gonna be holding about there now. Oh, couldn't get into gear again on that one. Need to slightly adjust my front. The radar. Nice. 430 pretty much all the way. You try not to look how many you, more you've got. As soon as you do, it's like, oh. <laughs> Good thing, man. <laughs> that one hurt. 175 hot feet per minute. I feel like I held my breath on that one actually. Not sure why. That was nasty. Okay, this is really starting to dig in. Manu. The gains though, the gains. Uh, well, obviously. Oh, 
friggin' hell. <laughs> Oh, that was horrible, that one. Stand up, change the muscles. There we go. I don't have to stand actually do anything now. slow now. This is my heart rate up. See, normally I'm at 169, but now I want to try. Drops back up again. Say what I'm gonna say about perfectness, perfection, whatever. Because I normally say it and then like, oh boom, perfect. But I don't think so. screwed up. Oh, I'm not impressed. So I'm not going to show you the cool down because there's just not much point. They failed. I thought there was a couple more intervals, but because my SD card stopped working, and I need to learn how to pause the game on Zwift without the phone app. But there should be surely there's a key because you push spacebar or menu, and the person still just carried on rolling. It took like two, like 30 seconds to stop completely, and the game timer to pause. So. 
I need to figure out some more lift shortcut keys. But predominantly, I've pretty much done all of that quite nicely. Um, to be fair, that SD card running out of memory, even though it's 32 gigabytes, has just completely ruined my perfect star rating. I'm pretty bummed about. But yeah, that was another video. Um, what I'll do is I'll, send, oh, I'll put a couple of pictures up of my stats at the end of the ride, simply so you can see what, what it was all about and see what's happening. But that's it for this ride and this video. Thanks for watching.